What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, this is TWD Motorsports and today we are working on the Suburban. So I told you guys in the last video that I was thinking about selling this thing and I have listed it. I actually have a guy coming to look at it tomorrow. And uh, anyway, there was something I needed to fix and that is the throttle body. So if you guys have experienced this on one of these before, um, kind of a, a couple issues that they have is they'll randomly throw a throttle body code. When you get that, you can't remote start it. So when the service engine lights on in one of these cars, you can't remote start it with the factory key fob, which kind of sucks. And um, this has been acting up in colder weather. Actually, we had some 14 degree weather um, probably a couple weeks ago. Actually, it's probably been about a month ago now, and this thing actually died on me about halfway to work. I drive it about 70 miles a day, about 35 there, 35 back. About halfway into my trip on the way to work, it died, and um, I beat around on that throttle body. It started back up, but I've been putting this off. I don't really know why because I've had this for a little while to fix, but today we are going to be replacing the throttle body, and I'll show you a little more to it once we get it apart. Um, a couple options that you have as far as replacement goes, but this thing is so filthy under here. I... I clean the jams when I wash it, but I don't ever wash under the hood. I really need to. If I was the original owner, it wouldn't look like this, but we do drive the crap out of this thing. But anyway, you're probably wondering like, why are you up here in the top garage? Well, um, we actually took my son to a basketball tournament over the weekend and we took the Tesla and we literally made it home with one mile left in range. So it's down in the shop charging. So, and I've got everything kind of bunched up down there. So this was open. I thought this doesn't take a lot of tools. So we'll go ahead and just fix this up here. But anyway, I want to show you guys some of the issues that it's having. I did record it the other morning. And uh, so we'll take a look at that. And then I've got the laptop out here with HP tuners loaded up. We will pull the codes and I'll show you exactly what codes to be looking for. But um, take a look at this video clip from the other morning. So listen to how this thing's running. You see the idle jumping around? And it seems to only do it in the mornings when it's cold. Um, on warmer days, it doesn't seem to do it as bad, but look at that thing chopping around and you can see the service engine light. Now, after a while, when it gets somewhat warmed up, it doesn't do it as bad, but um, let's get this thing fixed. As you can see, it was idling really choppy. The service engine light was on. And so uh, this is pretty common, like I said, on these five threes. And so what we're going to do is I've got my HP tuners laptop hooked up got the cable hooked up you can use any um, scanner just make sure the keys on and the run position the trucks not actually I mean it can be running for this it doesn't really matter but anyway on HP tuners we go up to what looks like the little service engine light and actually I already pulled this is what we've got so P121 and that's a throttle position sensor and these random misfires are generally generated by that also so you can also see the P21 19 that's the throttle actuator control and then p2135 which is throttle position sensor so what we're going to do is i'm going to go ahead i'm going to clear those out and then we will shut the key off once it's cleared and the very first thing we're going to do is we are going to unhook the battery so um, i'm going to try to show you guys this all uh, exactly how it's going to happen it's a relatively quick process so um, we're going to grab, I think it's a 10 millimeter, and unhook the negative side of the battery. No real good way to get the camera in here, but 10 millimeter on the top, generally it's a top post, and we're just going to unhook the negative side of the battery for now. Now that we've got that, uh, I'm going to grab the intake off here. This is just a cover that goes over the top of the intake, and you can literally just pull up on the front. And you should be able to kind of pull forward and it's kind of clipped in the back but um, just pull up not too bad once we get that out i am going to go ahead and unplug this guy here from the side of the intake and this is like a silencer to kind of keep the noise down but once we get that undone there's a flathead screwdriver here that you're going to need and a flathead here and then we can get this whole piece out of position I probably should have got some attachments. Oh well, they won't hurt anything. I was gonna say I could have used my 
impact. I'm going to use my impact on the throttle body, but. So there's another piece here that you may have to unhook. It actually hooks to a, a coolant line. And maybe we'll get lucky. No, we're going to have to pull it loose. There we go. This thing is ginormous, guys. We're going to pull this thing completely out of the way. You can see the screw that I took out here. And the other one here that went on the throttle body. Once we have that out, you can see we have access to our throttle body. Now what I was going to tell you guys is um, there is a little bitty lock right here that you can use a screwdriver and just kind of pry back on. I really need a smaller screwdriver. Just pry it back just a little bit so you can push it and unplug it. But what I was going to tell you is they make a replacement now for the side for the um, throttle position sensor. You can get this in a replacement form. However, um, I chose to just buy the entire throttle body. It is cheaper to do that option, but then you have to worry about getting it set. It's not a huge deal, and there's videos out there if you guys want to do that option, but I chose, like I said, to replace the entire throttle body. And uh, generally, if you did replace just the side, you would want to clean this up really well. Um, that's another reason why I chose to do that is um, I don't know, it's just the way I like to do things. So um, let's get a 10 millimeter, take these four bolts out. The two bottom ones are bolts, the top ones are kind of a stud. So you're gonna have two of these nuts on the top, which is kind of nice because used to it was all bolts and it doesn't just fall out of the way. And then two bolts on the bottom. And then our throttle body is loose. So where our issue, look how carboned up that thing is. It's absolutely ridiculous. So what I've got is a new one. And guys, you know how I am with buying, like I'm a GM guy. So I bought a brand new GM unit. And then like I said, you can get just the side, these little clips come undone and there's videos out there that show you how to replace that if you want. But I'm actually think I'm gonna grab a couple towels and wipe this off a little bit before I put the new one on. But look at the, no difference here other than this one's no good or just needs the um, throttle position replaced. Let me get that cleaned up and then we'll put this one back in place. Look at all the junk that came out of just the bottom of that absolutely disgusting so now we need to put the new one on and another thing to check guys this gasket mine's in great shape generally they are not a whole lot of wear happens there but if you need a new gasket you can order those as well mine is in good shape this thing has 200,000 miles on it so if it's good in good shape at 200,000 miles chances are yours is going to be in good shape so then we're going to put our two nuts back on the top here and our two bolts back in the bottom. And then I'm gonna snug this down. Um, this is probably one of those things that goes to, my guess is around 18 foot pounds. Not a lot, because it is going into a piece of plastic with the sleeve in it. So I'm not going to get real crazy tightening it. We should be good there. Now we're going to plug our throttle body back in and then slide our lock back into place. I want to make sure that it's seated on there properly. And um, then we need to grab, I've got that other piece setting beside here. We'll grab our intake uh, runner and put it back in. So we'll grab this monstrosity here. This is the weirdest design. It, and like I said, guys, it's made to make um, the air coming into the motor quiet. That's why a lot of times when you do a aftermarket intake, 
they'll be way louder. And that's because they are, uh, they take all this junk out of there. Uh, we need to put our tubes back in place here. Remember the one we pulled out of the side up here. Go ahead and push it in place. And then once we get it lined up with the throttle body, I think I'm gonna have to loosen it just a little. Oh, maybe not. There is a spot that it fits here on the intake. A little rubber grommet here. So we're good there. Tighten these back up. I really should have got like a 5 16 instead of doing it like this, guys. Now that we got that tight, everything's hooked back where it's supposed to be. We'll just grab our engine cover. We're gonna put this back section in first. Kind of slides back there in the back under these hoses. And then once you get it there, it pushes down in the middle. We are set. So, um, generally what has to happen, guys, and another reason why I unplugged the battery, normally I'd just swap this out. Um, but we'll leave the battery unhooked for at least 10 minutes and it doesn't even take 10 minutes to do this job But um, when you do that, it's gonna have to relearn the throttle position. So um, If I can't get it to relearn on its own, which you should be able to just by unhooking the battery um, We may have to do it within HP tuners But uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give it another that probably only took me five minutes Give it another five minutes on the battery and then we will hook it back up and we'll go in the truck, start it up, and see what we got going on. So we've had ample time here to let this set. We're gonna go ahead and hook the negative back up and snug it down. I'm using a ratcheting 10. Just seems to make life easier. Uh, also, I looked up the torque specs on that so you guys will know. On the throttle body, it's 89 inch pounds. So that is not very much. Make sure you don't over tighten it. You will strip it and oh my gosh, what a nightmare. Then you're thinking, um, then you're talking about replacing the intake and you don't want to do that So we're hooked back up here. Let's uh, I'll take the tent camera here off the tripod and we'll go in the car And you guys will get to hear the first start see if we get any weird uh, I'm sure the idle is gonna be weird while it sets um, But I'll show you guys what I'm talking about Now it's time to start this thing. So how we're going to relearn the um, idle position is you can take it to a facility like a GM facility or even a you know a mom and pop shop. Uh, we could do it with HP tuners. My laptop just completely died on me, so I took it in. Uh, I'm gonna have to grab my other laptop here in a second if we can't get it to work this way. So this method is we're gonna start this thing up, and it's probably gonna idle pretty high because the computer starts to learn that carbon buildup and the placement of the throttle, and it will start to open more and more as it gets carbon buildup to compensate. So the computer's actually pretty smart and learns that stuff. So don't be alarmed if when you start this thing up, it idles pretty high, uh, but we're gonna let it run for three minutes, and hopefully in that three minutes, it'll start to come down. And once we let it run for three minutes, we're gonna shut it off for about a minute, and then we're gonna repeat that step. So if at that point we aren't down to where it needs to be, we're gonna take it out and drive it at least over 40 miles an hour, generally around 44 miles an hour, and it should start to learn. But let's start it up for the first time and see what we've got. I think it's gonna be pretty high. Let's set a timer for three minutes. You may get a service engine light here too, so. Which will reset once we finish up. 
so we're about down to about 20 what 20 seconds here and we're still idling around 3,000 rpm so once we get to that three minute mark we'll shut it off and we're going to let it set here for about a minute and then we will start this process again and see if we've gained anything. If not, um, we're going to take it out on a drive and see if we can get it to uh, kind of settle out that way. And if that way doesn't work, then we'll grab the computer and see if we can manipulate it with NHP tuners. So after doing that procedure a couple times, it never came down. So instead of taking out and driving, I've got my other laptop out here and we are going to go into HP Tuner Scanner. So the same place we were before. You're gonna click your little green button up at the top if you're using this and we're gonna to go to Airflow. And you can see where it says throttle cleaned. We're gonna click that. Now the car is not running. So once we click that, doesn't act like it's responding, but we're going to start it up again and see what happens. And look you there, look at the difference. <laughs> Amazing. All right, so since we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and run the diagnostic codes again because it did pull up an SES light while it was running, and we're going to clear those out. Yeah, see, idle air control, RPM higher than expected. That's what pulled up. So a P0507, we're going to go ahead and clear that out. And we should be good. Look how good it's idling now. Perfect. So it does kind of help to have a program like HP Tuner. So not only can you do the tuning option, but it gives you so much more, guys, as far as like being able to do little stuff like this, like I'll go back in that tab and look at all the things that we can adjust. So engine diagnostic, under the engine tab, we have the, obviously the generator or the alternator. We have the idle, we can go up or down. This is all on the fly stuff. Um, throttle cleaned, obviously we just used. We can turn the air pump on, off, and some of your vehicles won't have this. And then you can turn each injector off. So. I could turn injector one off to see if we were having an issue um, maybe with another injector or like let's say that one injector was clogged you could turn it off and see if your idle changed stuff like that is just so cool this product is just so nice to have for stuff like that crank relearn I think we did that on a vehicle in the past relink the vats so if you had an issue where the vats you maybe replace the body control module but all this stuff really really in increases my need to have this in my opinion especially since the majority of my stuff um all uses well they work on non-gm products as well but most of my stuff's gm and it just this is nice to have well we just got back from a drive guys and everything is working perfectly like always though i will list all this stuff that i use in the description down below i'll list both whether you want to go uh the route to use the piece that goes on the side the actual throttle position sensor or you want to buy the whole throttle body like what i did i will list both of those and the tools that you need down in the description not a whole lot to it a couple 10 millimeters uh one flat blade screwdriver and that's pretty much it but uh, I will tell you guys, it seems like it's performing a little better. It actually is a little more crisp, and chances are it probably is because that old throttle body, you saw it, it was all gummed up and carboned up and definitely needed to be replaced. Like I said, I've had this thing for a while, um, and I really, I was going to do a video on it when I did it, which is what we're seeing here now, but um, that the guy that's supposed to come look at it tomorrow kind of accelerated that in the fact that I didn't, and I told him about it. This will be the second time he's came out. And uh, he actually wants to drive it this time. And I did tell him about that issue because the service engine light was on when he came last time. But um, I, I'm, I'm an honest guy. I wanna tell people about any issues that might be going on with the vehicle if I'm not going to be fixing them. Or even if I am, I still like to tell people that's just the kind of guy I am. But if you guys did enjoy this video, if it helps you out on one of these, I like I said, it's pretty common. So I've replaced them 
before on vehicles that didn't have any carbon on them. So maybe cleaning them helps, maybe not. I don't know. I think it's just a known issue on these things. But if you did like this video, guys, like always, please smash that thumbs up button. If you are not subscribed, please go down, hit that subscribe button. Of course, while you're down there, ring that bell icon that notifies you every single time we drop a new video and stay tuned to see what we work on next.